Yeah, hi guys. Given that it's really wet outside and it's damp, I can't drive the Atom. I thought I would do a quick video on um, on basically how you start it up, really, and some of the controls around the dash. Uh, some people some people have asked me how how all this works um, compared to the older cars, uh, and it's pretty simple in the Atom 4. So you basically got this immobilizer, uh, this little this little dongle thing here. You just keep that in your pocket. As long as that's in your pocket, then it can deactivate the the immobilizer, and that's the only thing you you need to start the car. And then this key is simply the the, the fuel filler cap. So all you need to do is just keep that little um, immobilizer in your pocket. There's no need to to kind of waft it under here like you did in the older cars. You just keep that in your pocket, and uh, and then you can start the engine. But before we do that, I'll demonstrate that in a sec. Um, some of the buttons here, you've got the horn there, this is the indicator, so left, right, and it's not self-cancelling like all the other atoms, so you have to turn that off, just like it is on the back mono and Catrums and other cars of this ilk, you've got to turn it off yourself. This is the, the rear fog light, uh, you've got your hazard, uh, that's the ignition, uh, this is the lights, so on the Atom 4 you've got auto, so that's off. If I turn it in zero position, it will turn on the daytime running lights, which are LED lights. Uh, and then if I, which is full full uh, full running, if I turn it onto a, to auto, um, it will automatically turn my lights on, my main beam, the halogen bulbs on this car, which are really bright. Um, that will turn them on automatically. When the ha when the main beam does go on, or when the main lights go on. Uh, the daytime rain lights will actually dim ever so slightly. They do stay on, but they, they're much dimmer than if they're just the daytime running lights. And then you've got your side lights, and you've got your, your, full, your full beam if you want to turn it on manually. Uh, this thing here is just to, if you want to flash someone, that's the flash. Um, and then if you want full beam, you just turn that up like that. Uh, this little flashing red light is the immobilizer. It means it's activated. So no one can just come in here and drive off in the Atom without the uh, without this immobiliser. So this is the key. You must guard this. Um, and then you've got the start button there where you hold. You just press and hold until the engine fires. Uh, this um, placeholder here is for the adjustable boost, which I don't have. Uh, this is the uh, tra traction control, uh, which is a 0 to 7 setting. This one is launch control. Uh, again, other options that you can have, and I don't have either of those. I just have full power all the time, and there's no traction control on this car, so I gotta really be careful with it. Um, this is the variable brake bias, so you can adjust the braking front to rear. So if I turn it this way, it moves the brake bias to the rear of the car. If I turn it that way, towards F, it's the front of the car. So it's 14 full turns front to rear. So if I'm fully at the back, full braking at the back, it's 14 turns until I get to, to the front. I usually have it in a position about 10 on rear, so it's mostly rear braking. And really, this is a simple device. Under here, you can see the brake. Uh, these two master, they're the, they're the master cylinders, brake cylinders. Um, I don't know if you can see, just there and there. When you turn that bar, that adjuster, it will adjust a little bar, so so it, it will divide the braking between those two cylinders. And of course, there's no on this car. There's no um, there's no servo, so it's just uh, uh, it's just you and the the brake pedal basically. You know, the harder you push it, the harder it brakes. Um, as to other creature comforts, not really much else here. Um, of course, you've got the gear change. Um, you've got your handbrake, you've got a place here, I've put that in there from the mobile phone. I've got a fire stinker show, which is really important from the track, uh, because generally track day insurance does not cover fires, so if the engine was to go up in flames, then at least I've got this before the marshals arrive and I can put it out, so it doesn't destroy the entire car. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Uh, and of course you've got your aero screen here. I'm actually sit, sitting right up in the car at the moment. I don't actually sit this high uh, just so I can get the video done. But let me just demonstrate how you, how you actually fire it up. 
So if I turn this ignition on, you can hear the noise at the back is the fuel pump because I've got the immobilizer. And then this light goes off, you see. So then now I'm ready to start. And then this is the dash. And I just hold and start. It's in neutral. Uh, it's quite noisy. Uh, so I just hold and start. Press the stop button here. As soon as you press the stop button, uh, now you can hear me better, I'm, I'm sure. Um, as soon as you press the stop button, then it turns the dash off, completely kills the the power. Um, if I had a uh, if I had a, a master cutoff switch, a red a red uh, switch, then I would have to turn that on first, of course. If it's not already on, I will get one fitted. I will get a master cutoff switch and I'll get it installed in here, down there, um, just, just to safeguard me. So now we've gone over all the buttons and the startup process and the immobilizer and whatnot. When I started up just now, I pressed the menu button. I mentioned that very briefly and you saw the screen change, but I didn't actually explain that. But this dash is made by AIM Technologies and, and it is a dash, it's not a data logger. Uh, so it will, it, it has the capability of logging your your laps and showing you the delta between your lap times. And as long as you've got a GPS module, which is this, this one here. So that's the GPS module, which is an AIMS module as well, that plugs into the data hub. So that's the, the AIM data hub there that black box with those two these two cables coming out of it uh, and that can be used to extend any peripherals any aim peripherals that that you actually want to to plug into your your car so here i can plug in a logger i can plug in a um a smarty cam for capturing uh, video and uh, any other peripherals that, that i want so Given that that plugs into the, the data hub, I, as I mentioned it also, I can plug anything else into that. Now, if I want a, uh, a AIM Smarty Cam, I can plug uh, the AIM Smarty Cam into that as well and and really extend the capacity, the capability of this, of this dash. Uh, and as I mentioned also, that this dash, it doesn't actually log, you can't, you can't actually plug your laptop into it and pull down all your lap times and your sector times and analyze them using uh, race studio analysis which is an aims techno uh, a piece of software that runs on your your computer um sadly it's just a a dash uh, if you try and download anything from it it just the software just won't be able to do it there's just nothing to download so in order to turn this dash into a logger you actually have to buy another piece of technology uh, called the strada logger it's an AIM Strada logger. It's, a, it's quite expensive. It's about £800, I think. And and that will plug into the data hub. And when that plugs into the data hub, you can you can then record. It will basically record everything. Like if you've got a brake pedal sensor, or accelerator sensor, and pretty much all the channels that, that, that this dash is, is capable of, of, of logging, you can, you, can, you can log and capture. So I'm considering getting one. I don't know. I don't have one. So all I can do at the moment is if I turn this ignition on. And it's pretty useful, but I, I do want some more functionality. So this, when you turn it on, you'll get this screen. Uh, this is the day, the daytime screen. So you've got your, uh, your oil pressure here, uh, your RPM counter here, your miles per miles per hour or kilometers per hour you can change it to kilometers quite easily in the settings screen and your uh, oil uh, your, what are your water coolant temperature i am talking to ariel about having a the oil temperature on here as well because that's the only thing really that's missing um and if you press this button here at the bottom you then get this this is the race screen uh, the track screen so here you've got your last lap uh, the one in the middle is your um 
is your uh, delta. So if it's if it's better than your 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 all your laps in in that session, then it will come up as a minus. Otherwise, it come up as a plus. So you can see, and then this one is your best time. So you know what your best lap time is. It's actually quite hard to see this when you're on track in a sunny day. I found uh, it's quite small. Uh, but when you get back to the pits, you can go through. If I press, uh, I don't remember which button it is. Is it this one? Yeah. So you can only ever have a total of te seven test sessions, and then when you're on dates rather. So when you go into these, it basically logs the uh, each line item um, is a separate day, and then when you go into that, you'll see all the different sessions for that specific day. Uh, but but once you reach seven, so in other words, seven days of driving, you lose the oldest. So that data then is gone. I don't know if there's any way of getting it back. So you can see here, Snetterton. I don't know why that's been selected, actually. That's weird because I wasn't at Snetterton on that date. Uh, but Snetterton 300 split is my own custom track set up uh, with lots of different splits. But yeah, so it's it's OK. It's not perfect because it doesn't allow me to look at my... My, my lap times um, to, to, in order to you know post post uh, the track days so I can see where I've been going slow where I'm going fast and um, you know and my deceleration and so on so uh, another thing I'm considering instead of buying the the strider logger to turn this into a data logger is buying the the Garmin Catalyst device that just sits in the car as a camera if you're not familiar with that look it up it's pretty pretty cool it's almost like a driver aid and it will give me my lap times and it will tell me where i'm slow and it will help me as i'm driving slightly different tool to this I mean, you could use both uh, pressing this menu button again gives you your, your your number of satellites actually i'm indoors in my garage here it's it's got a good connection it shows you how good that gps receiver is that's 15 satellites locked on that's incredible so if you're a track, um, it will show up here and you can select whichever customized track that you've set up and use Race Studio 3 to do that. Yeah, so as there's no tracks nearby, if I press this button, see that there's no tracks nearby. So uh, if I press the button again, I get the settings screen. I can change all these settings. Pressing it again goes back to the, the main driver screen. Uh, when the car's turned on, you'll notice that there's a, there's a label in the middle here which will tell you the gear selector gear selection so uh, what gear what gear you happen to be in and then when you go to the race screen the gear selector becomes slightly larger in the middle of the screen